Hey there, thanks for checking out my YouTube channel. This video is going to be three pro tips for non-professional guitarists. And uh, you know, whether you're considering embarking on a uh, career in the music industry, or whether you just play guitar as a hobby for fun and want to take it a few steps further, um, hopefully the things I talk about in this video can help you understand how to you know practically function in various musical situations so whether you're uh, playing in a band or recording music or just trying to get better in general uh, i'm pretty confident that uh, these three tips will help you out and these are things that i throw out to you know my students who i can tell they're hungry for more and want to you know advance their playing to the next level so uh, hopefully you enjoy this video. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel. Uh, let's get started. My first tip is to gain a solid understanding and command of triads. Uh, now I know all of these beginner open chords are triads. And maybe you've mastered those and can play thousands of songs. And that's great. Obviously, many of these uh, open position chords use more than three strings, so the notes of the triad are doubled or sometimes even tripled. Uh, but if I simplify it down to its essential parts, the root, the third, and the fifth, I get these smaller voicings. So if I take this G chord, and if I just simply go root, third, fifth, that's it. I have this nice little three note voicing, and then we get these things called inversions, which is just swapping the notes around, like here is root, third, fifth, and then we have uh, third, fifth, root, and then we have fifth, root, third, and I can do this on all the string groups, so that was the D, G, and B strings. Let's move it to the top set of strings, and there's more G triads uh, to the lower strings. You know, the lowest set of strings even. You're feeling really adventurous. Um, so you can play these tiny, you know, three note, ver uh, three note voicings all over the place. And, uh, you know, if you go through every key and you really get to know uh, those shapes, uh, you're gonna do a few things. One, you're gonna vastly expand your knowledge of the fretboard. So if you feel like you have some blank spots, you know, in certain areas, uh, or you're not confident, you know, like past a certain fret or something like that, um, this will definitely help that. And the second thing is you're gonna have a ton of new options for all those easy open position chords that you've been playing since day one. Uh, for example, you know, now if somebody asks you to play a G chord, instead of just going like that or maybe like that, now you have all of these other options. You know, and you can try, you can try a whole bunch of new uh, ideas. So, for example, if you have a progression like this, uh, let's start off with G, then maybe go to F, and then C, and D. You know, if one guitar player is playing those chords, uh, you don't necessarily just want to jump right in and hammer out the same exact voicings. So, if uh, your other guitar player is playing down low, maybe you'll want to come up high, and it's a great opportunity to uh, you know, use some triads, so. And come up with a nice complimentary guitar part. And maybe the other guitar player is not even necessarily playing, you know, block chords. Uh, maybe. It'll, We'll do a uh, more interesting part like some sort of bass line and uh, you know I'll do like a triad version here let's try to uh, plug it into a loop pedal so like maybe and then you can have a little bit of uh, interaction
and so far I've just been using what we refer to as closed triads, where the notes are, you know, as close together as possible. There are also these things called spread or open triads, and uh, that's where we just spread the notes out a little bit, and we get a wider sound, which is really nice, you know, as like a finger style device. You know, and it's really nice in certain settings, uh, but spread triads, that's a whole entire video in itself. But if you're looking to get started on learning your triads, you can begin with learning your major closed voicings and just pick a few keys per day and see how many inversions you can uh, play on each uh, set of strings. So I've been doing G, you know, and I just look for all the inversions I can and so forth, you know. Uh, pick a few keys per day. Uh, when you're comfortable with a major triad, you can actually move on to minor. I haven't done any minor in this video yet, but uh, you know, all you do is flat the third. So uh, how about C minor? And I do the same thing. Just play all the inversions I can, look for them everywhere. Just really get familiar. You know, all over the neck. And uh, That'll keep you busy for a while. Uh, if you're comfortable with the closed voicings, you can try the open triads. Beyond that, it's up to you. You know, there's diminished, augmented, suspended, uh, you know, 12 keys. It's enough to keep you busy for a long time. And when you walk into your next jam session, you know, everyone's used to hearing you noodle around on some pentatonics and, you know, bang out some bar chords. Uh, if you whip out these triads, and you have some decent ideas in the works, uh, people's ears are gonna perk up and uh, you're gonna raise some eyebrows and uh, you're gonna feel pretty cool, you know? My second tip, and this may seem a little bit silly, but some of you are going to feel it. Uh, my second tip is to get used to using your fretting hand pinky uh, early on in your playing, or right now, uh, if you feel like it's a weak spot. And I know some of you are rolling your eyes right now. I, I know it's a pain, but uh, you got to hear me out. Uh, so just hang in there. Now it's actually a blind spot in you know, most beginner guitar approaches. Uh, the pinky is usually just severely underused, and when it comes time, it's usually lagging behind. Uh, I mean, obviously beginners are kind of just focused on being able to play anything at all with any fingers, not necessarily, you know, focusing on like, you know, pure technical brilliance or anything, but, so that's fine. But sooner or later, that pinky is going to need to get some action and, you know, it's often not ready. But anyway, this video is more directed at non-beginner players looking to get to the next level. So if that's you and you know your pinky needs work, then start developing it now. You know, it doesn't matter how long you've already waited, just start now. And all you need to get the ball rolling are just a few simple finger exercises and these can be as simple as, you know, good old four finger chromatic patterns. You know, you can just go one, two, three, four, right in order, all the way across the strings. Get each finger some work. You know, and then I typically recommend people to uh, shift up to uh, you know, four frets up, so if I did one, two, three, four, then I'm going to shift up to the, uh, the fifth fret with my first finger and I'll come back down. It's a very basic exercise, 
but it's something to get you started. And then of course you can do some basic scale shapes and focus on using the pinky where appropriate. So, you know, here's like a C major scale, nothing fancy. So yeah, you may recognize that scale and sure, it is possible you can get away with, you know, without using the pinky, just use three fingers. But you know, the, the whole point here is to use uh, all four fingers, you know, in an appropriate manner. So go ahead and get that pinky some work. You can try some different scale shapes. So it seems simple, but again, you're just trying to uh, gradually, you know, work that pinky in your playing. I think these are two good ways to start. Now beyond this, you know, you can search out for more exercises. You can get as intense as you want to. But, you know, when you're first starting off, I'd say go for like 10 or 15 minutes a day of this technical work. You know, I, I don't ever like to overdo something like this with students. You know, you might burn out if you do it too long at first. Um, but just be patient and consistent and the results will come in time. Now I'm not gonna deny that there have been many great guitarists from all styles of music who probably never use their pinkies. And sure, you yourself could probably, you know, go through life or even have a successful playing career uh, never using your pinky. But when I think about a professional guitar player in a musical situation, I think about somebody who's technically proficient and whose hands are ready for anything. And that means all four fingers are in good working condition. Now I'm not saying you have to prepare yourself for a modern day guitar concerto or anything like that. Uh, I mean, who knows, maybe one day you'll wanna play Cliffs of Dover or Eruption or something like that. But regardless, if you're just trying to pick up some professional guitarist habits, then you know take care of your pinky and it's gonna take care of you. I mean, take care of all your fingers, of course, but uh, I think you get the idea. My third tip to becoming a much better and more professional sounding guitar player is to learn how to mute. Muting is one of the most important elements in higher level guitar playing. And I have to say, it's just incredibly difficult to teach to somebody. Uh, it's something that you really just need to discover for yourself little by little. It just takes a lot of practice and alone time with your guitar and the realization that, hey, there's a lot of extra noise going on here when I play certain things and I need to do something about that. You know, this can be when you're playing chords. Uh, I know that D chord is usually a culprit. It's supposed to be four strings, but if you're a little too sloppy, you know, you can uh, hit extra strings, which doesn't sound so good. You know, it sounds a little too muddy. And you know, even some of those five note voicings like C and A. You know, so that's just one example of, uh, you know, out of control string noise. Uh, another notorious thing are power chords. And uh, you know, usually when people first learn their power chords, you get a lot of extra strings ringing out. Not so good, you know. It's especially noticeable when you have some distortion on. Instead, you know, we want that nice tight. You know, but it is a little bit tricky at first, you know, to, uh, to clean up those power chords. Of course, it can also happen when you're playing single notes. So if I try some pentatonic stuff and I ignore my muting habits. Um, especially with distortion, you know, you know, you not only have to watch out for open strings, but you know, you can also, uh, set off some harmonics as well, you know, all over the place. And, you know, I'm not trying to mock anybody here by playing this way. It's actually kind of difficult to demonstrate because it's uh, so against my, my own playing habits, but I think you get the idea. Now, I can't really teach you how to mute, 
But what I can say is you have two hands and pretty much anything goes. So it's kind of up to you to find out what works best and you know, what you're most comfortable doing. You know, like this power chord here. Uh, I can actually strum all six strings, you know, and get a little bit more aggressive with my strumming. And um, that's because of the muting. You know, I'm controlling which strings I want to sound. So I've got those three strings right there. And then the, uh, the low E string is being blocked with my first finger right there. Now it actually kind of bumps into a harmonic, but it doesn't really, you don't notice it because the other notes are louder. Uh, and then the uh, top two strings, the B string and the E string, are actually getting blocked by my, this part of my first finger. So I can hit that all day long and I know uh, those strings, those unwanted strings aren't going to sound. You know, another example might be just to take one note, like this A here on the D string, 7th fret, and, you know, I'll block every other string. So, only the note I want is going to sound. All these other strings are being blocked by various parts of my other fingers and even my thumb is coming up here to keep that low string under control. And then I typically use my right hand, you know, to mute when I'm playing single lines or some, doing some soloing and uh, kind of like right there, like I have my palm, you know, gently resting on the strings that aren't being used, like these lower strings, you know, to prevent them from starting to vibrate a little bit or generating harmonics or overtones. Uh, even when I have some distortion on, you know, I want to keep them under control. And I can say I also feel a whole lot of muting going on with my left hand. You know, it's just kind of second nature at this point. And of course, when you talk about the right hand and, you know, palm muting, there's a whole lot of accents and articulation that you can add into your uh, soloing. You know, for example, let's see. You know, all made possible through muting. So that's muting to clean up your playing, which is absolutely essential. And there's also stylistic muting which uh, can actually contribute to the type of music you're playing. So, for example, maybe I want to try something a little bit funkier. So in that pattern, I'm using a lot of muted strums, you know, to give it a little bit more pop. And uh, you can also do that with, like, single notes. something like that. Um, of course, there's also like just kind of more simple strumming patterns. You can uh, throw in some, you know, more basic accents with uh, muting, like. So, you know, uh, it's definitely a good thing to uh, be able to do and kind of, you know, uh, incorporate in your playing. So one little mini bonus tip that has to do with another type of muting is this. I'm talking about, you know, controlling the noise coming from your hardware or your electronics, all your equipment. You know, in this case, my Strat pickups are buzzing. You know, they generate that pretty noticeable hum, and if I'm on a gig or in a rehearsal, uh, you want to cut that down as much as possible, you know, especially like if you're talking to somebody or maybe the sound guy, you know, is trying to do his job. It's a lot harder when, you know, if you've got your 
your pickup's humming and somebody else is making some sort of crazy noise, you know, you want to keep it professional, always be in control of uh, things like that. And uh, something else along those lines is if you ever have to do this, you know, don't do it like this. No, no, no. We have these wonderful volume knobs on our guitar, and uh, believe me, nobody wants to hear how out of tune your guitar is. So whenever you tune, uh, turn the volume off, and then do what you gotta do. I can't tell you how many times in rehearsal or in classrooms, you know, somebody has to tune up and they just do it full volume. And I'm like, okay, thank you know, we don't, we don't want to hear, you know, how bad your guitar sounds right now. Just do, you know, take care of that in private, please. So anyway, those are just two uh, silly, but you know, uh, tips that are uh, certainly going to help you sound and act more professional. Well, that's going to do it for this video. Those are my three tips, and hopefully they help you gain some insight to the mind of a professional guitarist. I hope you had fun. I hope you learned something. And if you have any thoughts or questions, please feel free to leave a comment below. Also, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and also please consider supporting me on Patreon. I have a link to my account uh, in the description, and currently I have some free material posted. So go ahead and check that out. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.